All right, everybody, this is Larry, a.k.a. Blue Men Rule, uh, with uh, Back Here in Your Ear with Prove Your Point 56. On this week's episode, uh, we're just going to talk about things that make us laugh a little bit and uh, try to figure out which Saturday morning cartoon has the best music intro. Uh, all that and more on uh, Prove Your Point 56. Let's go. Prove Your Point is brought to you by Open Form Radio, Blue Men Rule, Ace Black, The Bay. It's time to commence the great debate between prosecution and defense It's like yang and yin, but only one can win So without further ado, yo, it's time to begin Prove your point, it's brought to you by Blue Man Rule Assisted by ace black men, that boy's a fool Armed with knowledge and just a microphone is my tools And to the listeners, let me just lay down the rules Both sides get open and counter and close it with marks All the while, smile and partial judge watches the sparks But there is a time limit, each section is two minutes Time to find out who will win it, come on Let's get it. Welcome back, everybody, to Proofy Point 56. It's Larry, aka Blue Man Rule, and I am joined by two of probably the funniest people I know that, that sit down and, and put a mic in front of their faces. Um, one of them will <laughs> will go will go by uh, who I first started listening to first. Um, I man, I don't know how long I've known him since 2007, I think. Uh, but uh, he goes he goes all the way back, um, man. Post game report. Now he's over there at the Phoenix uh, the Phoenix Project, and it's none other than Mark, aka Phoenix. What's going on, player? You make me seem real old, and I'm not old at all. <laughs> like I'm hey, still hey, in my twenties. <laughs> hey, 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 you know what though? Hey, I, I tell that to myself all the time, but it's a lie I tell myself. I say I'm not that old, but I. Am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said too bad. Okay, woo. Okay, go for it. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. And uh, also joining me on the mic, uh, you guys know him. If you listen to Prove Your Point for any appreciable amount of time, you know um, when, when I have real talk in the building, there's always disagreements. But, um, he, again, he's one of the funniest guys that I know behind the mic. It's none other than Mike, a.k.a. Scarfinger. What's happening? Today? I know that there's going to be a disagreement about oh. the, um, about the, the – the the cartoon song because there's only there's, there's only two acceptable answers. See, see, you see how he come in laying down rules that ain't even rules yet. This there's is- only two acceptable <laughs> answers, and the only reason why there's two answers is because is it's uh with or without words. With or without words. I'll agree. Oh. I'll agree. Now, now. <laughs> Because the one without words, I already know off the bat. And if it's not it, I'm 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 blocking and deleting a couple of people. That's all I'm saying. You, okay. Yeah, for real. It's, if, 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 you, if you don't think that this is the best, uh, the, the one without words is no question is the best one without words. Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, this is what we're going to do. Because I was going to say this for a debate, and y'all would have jumped up in it. So, okay, everybody gets 20 seconds to give your opening parlay at what is, let's go with words first. 20 seconds what is the best what is the best cartoon theme song or music intro with words and you get 20 seconds prove your point scarfinger let's go teenage mutant ninja turtles easy i don't even need 20 seconds that's ninja turtles that's it what else what else is there ninja turtles that's that's all can come on right now and everyone will start singing everyone (laughs) It, it's like it's like it's like um you know the Ninja Turtle song is like let's get it started like you put you put let's get it started on in the club right now I <laughs> bet you the club <laughs> for real as old as let's get it started is it's still that it's still that heat dog hey hey I never <laughs> knew Saturday morning cartoon show theme shows were supposed to make it to the club dog I mean you, I think, to you to for DJ. real for real How son you, you, put, to run you, that, put some, you put some bass behind the um the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle song and nope. I think I think it could rock the club be no no not but for real though with words um it is it's, no question it's Ninja Turtle okay 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 all right all right then, Phoenix man, you gotta come with some. You gotta come with something different. Well, well, what you got? What you got? What words? I ain't even gonna lie, it's the same one. What? It is the same one. Like it's like who didn't grow up on the the Ninja Turtles? And then the second that song came on, like that that opening with the the, the lid of the sewer comes up, and then the lights shoot out. And come on now, everyone knows that. 
Ninja Turtles? You mm -hmm. should let me. You should let me go first on the next one because I don't want to make it seem like I'm copying Scott Finger. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's twenty seconds anyway. Okay, all right. Hey, for me, um, it's, it's it, it runs real tight. It runs real tight. And the reason I say it runs real tight because Ducktales has a classic song. Classic. That wasn't Saturday Absolutely. though. But uh, that's true. Was not Saturday. Hmm. Mm. Shout out to my, shout out to Pow Girl on the the, the Ducktales uh, the remix joint. Okay, okay. You know one that I think was Saturday, and I can't recall. Y'all gonna have to you're gonna have to refresh my memory. Spec the gadget. That was that was my jam. That was my jam. So. It's back to Gadget though. Yeah. Yeah, dog. That's what you, yeah, dog. Oh, we came with yeah. with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yeah, that's in my running. Yeah. That's in my running now. But yes, sir, dog. Come on. Doom, 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 doom. You know what I said? Doom, 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 doom. You had. You yeah. know what I said? Nah. Like, it was, yeah, nah, dog. Sir. It came creeping in on you, dogs. And Spectre nah. Gadget was off the chain because you knew because when it dropped, doom, 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 doom. You were like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You knew you were in for something serious when that Inspector Gadget drop came. So It ain't got yeah. nothing on Ninja Turtles, B. It, it just doesn't. Like, okay. It just... okay. Let's, bring, let's bring the counter then. Let's bring the counter then. All right, then. So, Scar, why do you think um, Inspector Gadget ain't got nothing on the Turtles? Like, I, I need to know because you just, I mean, you, you put it's, it, that. I mean, nothing. well, first of all, it's not enough words. It's not enough words to sing along, and what the one thing that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got is that backup. Like you can, you can, you can actually sing backup if you don't feel like singing the lead. You can sing backup, and you know what? And when you're young, you can you can hit that high note. You know, you can get your soprano on when you're young. You know what I mean? You know that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that high part, and then when, and then when your balls drop, you know, like you got all that in there, and you can sing backup if you need to. Like it, it has everything. It has everything you need for for a theme song. Well, I'll say this, man. I'll say this. Um, the turtles were cool. The turtles were cool, you know, but you know. I think that when it's back to Gadget, because you had to go, Gadget, go. I mean, you could harmonize on that part. You could really you could really lay it down on that part. And I think with the Turtles, I mean, yeah, it's easy to rock it out when you got a whole group you're talking about. You know, you know, heroes in a half shell and everything. But, you know, Inspector Gadget, he didn't need that. All he needed was, was what's his, what's his name, Penny? Like, that's all he needed. And he and then he had the Gadgets, and then he had he had the choir back there, uh, the girls back there on the mic, shoe whopping, shoe, and that was it. That's all he needed. You so, on that by yourself, brother. Yeah, you, saying, you, you, you are on the island, hey, dog. Hey, yeah. hey, no man is island. No man stands alone. And <laughs> expect the gadget, but he's the one person that can stand alone because he's Nolly, man, you on half, the island. Half man, half amazing. So, you're, very, uh, you're very much on the island. All right, Phoenix. Closing arguments. Can, can you bring a closing argument on why the Turtles theme song was number one? Like, because mm -hmm. right now I need to know. Okay, and this is really just called the facts. Okay. So, okay. okay. Which one is more prevalent today? Which one is more successful movies? Which one is still a living, breathing franchise? And how many successful video games? Um, that's a good question because I think I can only count one successful video. But for the turtles? Yeah, the arcade. That's fine. That's fine though. We'll, we'll rock with that. We'll rock with that. You... Hold on. That was the that was the 360 one that seemed to do do pretty well. <laughs> Well, but, I mean, yeah. Let me tell you, because there's two successful ones. Actually, well, two most known successful ones. The 1989 we, we, arcade mm -hmm. and the original. We, we, we can't count that NES game. That thing was impossible to beat. No, 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 not that one. While that is a classic, that was impossible to beat. But I'm talking about the Super NES game, Turtles in Time. Word up. Well, you know, I, you know, and and to, to 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 you know further your point. Sega had a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that I actually own that was pretty darn good. Like, it was fantastic. I, I love that game. I play, I must have played that game and finished that game 20 times. Uh, it was great. It was fantastic. So, uh, yeah, but that does not... It, but it's just it's just a better song, period. It's just it, a better song. It's, it's, it's an okay song, but, you know, a, um, a, a long-standing franchise does not a great music, you know, theme song make. It just doesn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Inspector Gadget had a drop in it that almost every popular song on the radio today has. You know what I'm saying? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was just kind of just, like, rocking out on the guitar. Not everybody is about all that rock. With Inspector Gadget, you didn't know what you was going to get. It was a crossover. Skies, you didn't know what you was going to 
know how you're gonna have it. You can't even get your Carlton on to inspect the gadget. Dude. I mean, I mean but, but Carlton didn't make me get on the special gadget. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I I, I don't know, man. I, like honestly, I feel like inspect the gadget deserves to he deserves uh, an honorable mention here at the very least. Like inspect the gadget does nah. go hard to this day. Nah, to this day. you're 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 outvoted two to one on this one. And, and it's okay, it's okay, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drop it at the end of the show, maybe even while we're talking, so people can remember what Inspector Gadget sounds like. Uh, because I really feel like that's important. Uh, it, it, you know, it makes me glad, because I'm here right now, I'm probably not going to listen to the show again, so I think I'm okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you, know, you can do what you want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I tell you what, how many you, do you guys watch Hulu like I do? No, not really. I'm an I'm I'm pretty much a Netflix. I'm a Netflix and Amazon guy right now. Okay, no, no, you know what? And that's perfectly fine. And because the entire reason that I asked this question is because I, I then that means you guys have not seen this this video or this this uh this ad. What sounds good for dinner, guys? Sometimes all you need to get everyone together is great food and a little help from technology. Introducing Panda Express Online Ordering, a new way to order for yourself or a group. Now, lots of delicious dishes are just a click away, like honey sesame chicken breast, an all-time favorite that's back for a limited time. It's Panda and a happy bunch. Panda and a you. begins with a dad on the couch. Him and him and three kids, right? He has he has actually two kids. He has a kid on he has a, a, a little baby girl uh, on the on on the like right by his recliner. He has a little boy on the on the uh, on the sofa and he's over there playing a tablet, right? And he's looking around like, all right, what are we gonna get for dinner, right? Just the whole ad, right? And then they're like, how about Panda Express, you know? But they don't really say any words, so he just pulls it up on his phone or on his laptop, and then he shoots then he shoots the suggestion over to his son on the tablet, right? on Panda Express, then it goes to the older daughter who's at her soccer practice, and she's like, all right, what do you guys want? Let's get some food. And then it shoots to mom who's at work in the boardroom, right? So she's at work in the boardroom, and then it flashes all the way over to Panda Express. Guess who's picking up the food at Panda Express? It's the mom. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me just share something with you. If you haven't been in a board meeting, um, in a boardroom, a, you don't pick up and look at your phone when people are asking you what you're gonna get for dinner. B, if you're in a boardroom while everyone else is at home, why can't the daddy get his lazy ass up and go down to Pan Express <laughs> and get the food him damn self instead of waiting no mom when she clearly is busy <laughs> instead of waiting on her to go pick up the food? Why can't he take it down? Nah, you know B, that's saying? that's her job, the kitchen in the bedroom. Oh, so bogus. Oh, so uh, <laughs> gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Like <laughs> I just. I just I, I, <laughs> All right, for everyone, for everyone who does not know, that was a good times reference. That was not my. Own. That was a good right. times reference. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I mean, like 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 people should understand. Like this is the stuff. Like like I was just looking at it in the commercial, and I just, you know, I, I just wonder, you know, who. Who checked that commercial? You know what I'm saying? Like that had to go through some marketing screening from somewhere. Someone had to check that and be like, you know what? That's all right. I co-signed that commercial. I don't co-sign that commercial. If she's clearly busy, like just yesterday, I went and picked up food for my, me and my family. Cause guess what? My wife was busy. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't go down like that. So Panda Express, if you're listening, change that ad, like make the dad to go do something. Cause he ain't doing nothing but sitting down on his laptop at home chilling like he can put the kids in the car and go to Pan Express pick up the food and have it ready for mom when she and, and 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 the oldest daughter when she get home so that's I guess that's my concern with the Pan Express commercial man but I just I think it's real funny that uh that they that they let that ride like that so I'm I'm looking at that I'm looking at the ad now hold up he a lazy daddy I mean that dude is lazy lazy I'm telling you, it's only about 30 second ad. Ah, Phoenix, I wish you'd have seen it. Ah, I wish you'd you should, you should check it out sometime. Well, I will. Do, I definitely if, will. Yeah, it's, it's just, it, it, the way it goes, you don't really pick up on it, but you're like, hey, why, why is she, wasn't she just in a meeting? Yeah, real talk. <laughs> I, I think you, all right, I just watched it. You were right. Dad was sitting at home not doing anything and asked them what they wanted to eat. 
So they, they're all just, everyone, you know, the kid is sitting on the couch not doing nothing. The, 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 the girl is at soccer practice. She's sitting down not doing nothing. Mama's at work. Is she the one that got to go get the food? Like, come on, son. That's what I'm saying, man. Okay, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I, okay, I looked it up. So, yeah, that's a bull. That's a straight bull because she was the only one that was actually doing something. Right, right. Right? Except the oldest one. She was at soccer practice. You know what I mean? No, no. She was at soccer practice, but she was sitting down with her homies chilling. Yeah, that's true. She was on the sideline. She was. She was <laughs> yeah, they were, they were sitting down chilling. She was on the phone. You know what I mean? She was getting her Facebook on. Right, right, right. Now, now what I find amazing is, um, you know, Redbox made a resurgence at the end of last, I guess, I guess at the end of last video game generation, right? So... Now, we all now have current gen consoles, which I'm very happy to say, but uh, no current gen consoles be, being Xbox One or PS4, at least in my area and on the app that I can see, are available at Redbox. So my question to you guys is, what does that communicate about Microsoft and Sony's position on, like, I guess, used games? I mean, because... Um... It, it no, I don't think it's really their their position on used games. I think it's pointing out the truth about this current generation. It's absolutely not needed. You don't think it's needed for people? To no. Stay no. Unless 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 you're a graphics whore, this 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 console generation is absolutely not needed. Period. It's just not. Like, there's no reason for us to have a, a Xbox. There's no reason to have an Xbox One or a PS4 right now at all. Like, there's. there's they they don't really serve a purpose. Like if you could have got if you could have got a little bit more juice out of the previous generation, there would be no reason to have either one of these. Okay. Well, well, I, and I thought you were talking about the rentals. I thought you were referring to the rentals not being needed. But uh, Phoenix, what do you think, man? Personally, I mean, I don't. I'm coming from a little bit of a bougie standpoint, so please bear with me. I don't like secondhand stuff. So rentals in my personal opinion, have never had a space with me. Um, I think that's a lazy way of saying, well, I don't know how a game is instead of actually doing your homework on it. And with services like Twitch, you can virtually see how a game plays and the things of that nature, because people are up 24 hours a day broadcasting on Twitch. Um, everything right. is virtually, get, well, I can't even say it's virtually going, because it's already happening. Everything is headed towards digital. As much as people want to fight it, I mean, okay, look at Destiny. Everyone fought, kicked, bitched, and complained, always online console, but Destiny is an always online game. You can't play that game unless you have internet. Same thing with Titanfall. So it's kind of like, what are... <laughs> your, two, your two examples are two of the biggest disappointments of the current gen. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. It very much is. It very much is. But what I'm... I mean, okay. Personally, look, I love Destiny, so... Uh, and I, I've never played Titanfall, so I can't, I can't say anything about Titanfall. I'm not, I mean, to me, I think they're the biggest two disappointments of 2014, personally, but, you know, I guess we'll get into that in a, a different day, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just goes to show you that I don't think it's a Microsoft and Sony thing. I want to say it's more down to the developers and publishers because they're the ones that would be supplying them with the game, not really Sony and Microsoft. Okay, okay. So you think it's the um, developers and the publishers, and I think, and I think that's valid, that's valid. To a point, but I think I believe also that the platform holders, and to me, the reason that it's really important for me, I guess, is that I, I believe that the platform holders, uh, being Sony and Microsoft, and I, I can't really speak for Wii U, but I believe that they want people to tie into their their digital marketplaces more and actually use those services there um, a lot more than they use anything uh, to um, from an ex external um, external source. So, of course they are. Yeah. Of course they are. I mean, look at I'm, what they're doing now. Microsoft hasn't fully announced this or marketed it, but when you pre-order games from them, now the game is available at midnight your time, not West Coast time anymore. Yeah, that 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 messed me up with Destiny. I I I did the I bought di digital on the PS4, and right when I right when I pressed OK, pay for my Destiny, the time I saw the timer, and the timer said. You know, if the timer was basically for West Coast time, so that was a problem for your boy. So, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Now, now, and so you know, 
I really want to go back. You guys both mentioned Titanfall and you mentioned Destiny. And I think I'm going to do never, a jump. I never commented on the red box thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Scar. My bad, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to run over you. Go ahead. No, this is really easy. I game fly. I own red box, so I don't care. <laughs> a, a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. Back to you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for that, Mike. I, uh, <laughs> but uh, but but no. So um, so but you know, w- without a regard, you know. So we mentioned uh, you know, Titanfall and Destiny, and I played Watch Dogs and finished Watch Dogs, and there has been a rampant, a rampant case of overhyping games this year, like an astronomical amount of hype have gone into four games this year, and. And, and and I want to know, um, like I have my own take on it, but someone is to blame for overhyping everything, and I have fingers to point, and, and not specifically, but just at particular particular players within the whole gaming sphere. You know what I mean? So, um, so so Phoenix, we'll start it off with you, man, because you and I were kind of having a discussion about this this week, man. But but man, who does it come down to? Like like. When it comes down to who's overhyping games, who do you look at and say, you know, I think I think they're doing that. Who who do you have? Well, I'd like to point the kids to Forbes.com because they made a magnificent article about uh, what's that girl's name? Shadows of Mordor made a fantastic article about mm-hmm. that game where the game came out of nowhere. No, mm-hmm. it was on nobody's radar. And it wasn't mine. hyped at all. Well, I, it wasn't on mine. It damn sure wasn't on mine. <laughs> but it was not hyped at all. And yeah, Blue sent me a message like, you, you buying that Shadow of Mordor? I was like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> he so did. He was like, he's like, nah, B. <laughs> just let it go. He just let it go. <laughs> but the funny thing about that is, like the article was saying, it's like, no one ex- like really expected this game to be good. Everybody just looked over and like, yeah. And then it blew everybody's minds away. But then when you get games like Destiny, Titanfall, and Watch Dogs, and uh, it's it's it comes from the developer first, in my personal opinion, because um, they've been working on the game for however many years or whatever the case may be, and they're pumped to see their product finally get pushed out. Then mm-hmm. you get the media. Well, I, I'm not going to say the media because they're not really media. You get the game, the, the enthusiast. enthusiast. There you go, right. the enthusiast press, where they're reporting on these games, and they're like, "Oh, this is what the developer told us, and they gave us two percent of the game to play with, and this is exactly what they said. It's going to be everything in a bag of Buford's <laughs> and all this other stuff." A so, bag of yeah, I was just thinking that. I, like, I never heard that one. That's that's it, new. And that's awesome. <laughs> So it, it to me, it starts with the developers. It starts with the publishers. I mean, that's their job. They're gonna pump up anything that they're working on. Of course, I can tell you exactly everything that I'm working on job-wise, which would be classified. So I wouldn't be able to do that. But you know, I'd be able to and just be pumped up about it, just like I'm sure the two of you would be. But then when you get it into the hands of consumers, who's like, okay, well, this isn't what you, we were told. This actually sucks. Actually, so what's going on? Right. 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 And you know, and and, and the, the the writer over at uh, Forbes, who's Paul Tassi, who I haven't been reading very long, but I actually like what he writes. Like he he's actually pretty good. You know, he he went on to discuss that, and you know, I think there are a couple of culprits. Um, first of all, I think that that you're right. The of course the gaming media and or the the game enthusiast or whatever, whoever tackled this stuff, you're right, man. That like they they grasp at it. They grasp at it like it's a like it's a cold drink on a hot day, and like they hang on to it, and they constantly keep inundating you with things in your face. Like the Watch Dogs marketing had to that marketing train had to have been like literally tens of, if not hundreds of millions, because it came at you every single week for like six months about something new, something new. This is why we delayed. Here's something else, and it's like, man, shut up. I know you're coming. I don't want to hear about you anymore. But uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that does not prove to to help really like any one of us out. It just it just doesn't. Like I, I'm 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 at the point to where just tell me about the game, tell me where I can learn more information about it on my own, and trust me to do so. 
but I don't need you to constantly keep telling me that your game is coming out because I know your game is coming out, you know, and um, and, and I and I also blame I really have to blame publishers for that overhype, but really it goes down to this, these 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 gaming outlets that constantly. In order to get click-throughs, in order to get people hyped about games, in order to get more traffic on their site, oh, you, oh, you, you, you gotta run with the biggest games. And look, that has to stop. Because let me tell you, as someone, let me, let me just take it not only from a content creator standpoint, but let me just, let me just, let me just take it from a, a consumer standpoint. Look, man, I can't trust you if all you're doing is trying to push this product on me that I'm gonna have to spend my hard on money on. Look, just give me your opinions about it. Shut the um, hell up and let's move sir, on. Go, go ahead. Um, I believe the phrase is, "We don't believe you. You need more people." Um, really, the the the, <laughs> the <laughs> falling for falling for the hype is one hundred percent on us. I agree, and that was my guess. Would be my final point. It's one hundred percent on us. Like they can sell us. Like they can sell. Look, the you know, it, it you know the the hype can come from these places. It's up. It's up to us to keep believing this stuff. Like I mean, with, with some of the stuff for Destiny, um, you know, there's a lot of it uh, that like previews and stuff like that that the the enthusiast press saw that didn't actually make it into the game so when they're talking about how awesome these things are they're talking about the things that they actually saw that ended up not being in the game and you know that's kind of you know they're only talking about from 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 their perspective it's up to us to interpret it and decide how we're gonna feel about it I mean, I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't hyped for Destiny until I actually played the beta, well, the alpha, actually. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I built it up because I expected there to be more. I was like, oh, this is only the beginning. Like, I expected it to be all of, you know, all that in a bag of Buforts. But, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's my fault that... I thought that more that it was going to be more and I thought that this was only the beginning and I did not know that basically I was playing the whole game um <laughs> in the alpha and the beta like mm -hmm. I didn't know that like no one you know no one knew that but I mean when it comes to hype you know what they tr they do this all the time that's the reason why these places have marketing budgets like mm -hmm. this, you know they it's it's their job to try to sell us something it's up to us to fall for the you know that we you know we people fall for the call of duty thing every day like you know every year it's the biggest blah 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 even though you know it's slacked off in the last couple of years but you know you can't walk into a game stop without call of duty yeah <laughs> you know like, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's and it's it's up to it's up to you to decide whether you're gonna fall for Call of Duty Rehash this year, right? Right. And, or you're gonna call or are you gonna fall for Madden Rehash this year? You know because we we really only think about hype when it comes to these extremely large franchises. Mm -hmm. it, I, I mean, mean, personally, I decided I decided that I was not going to get I was not gonna get overly hyped about a video game since Mass Effect 3. Like that was yeah. the last game that I went that's the last game that I went that that I went gaga for until until Destiny. That's because like I said I expected more than was actually there. But I still enjoyed my time. I took two days off for Destiny. Did you really? Yeah. I took the day of and the day after off. Um because I expected this epic long thing and you know like after after the after the first day and a half like i was at a level 15 and i was like something's not right about this mm -hmm. you know like knowing that right. the level cap was at 20 mm -hmm. um so i mean it's it i mean it's really up to us it's really up to you yeah. and are are you gonna keep falling for the banana in the tailpipe <laughs> or the box of buford's on the corner <laughs> like listen listen, listen. <laughs> Like I completely agree, man, because I've been saying since I don't know 2009, people need to temper their expectations, man. Like you need to bring it down. Like because video games are one of those hobbies where people are highly invested. Invested means that you do your research. That means that you really are highly interested in the information and in in, in the topic, and you seek out information to learn more about it. 
right? Yeah. And well, actually, it's not really true. Like, but just like what happened with Destiny is the, is the proof that you know even though you go and seek out all of this information it still might be very incomplete like let's think about think about you know like we we got bamboozled so many times and we just keep forgetting that this is a, that it's 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 gonna happen again like you know we bought brutal legend we did we bought brink you know what I mean? Like y'all did. I, did. I, did. I had I had at one point I had three copies of Brink. Right. But, right. So I mean, we bought those games based off. Of, I mean, Brink before Brink came out, Brink was like the the was going to be everything, and then mm-hmm. it was like not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and but it's really all of these like really large franchises, especially the ones that that have been in development for 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 a long time, or the ones that turn around every year. And it's like I said, it's up to us if we fall. For it. Right, right. Finish. You got anything else on it, man? Nope. I mean, I'm in agreement with what Scarfinger said. 100% with both of you said. So I mean, it goes back to down to a gamers can be idiots or you can be actual consumers you're right you want to talk about ga- gamers being an idiot i just found out like the last couple of days about this whole gamergate thing holy crap yeah man I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that i checked out of the whole gamer thing a long time mm-hmm. ago i'm just i i, I yeah what I'm, the hell is gamergate look that up don't i'm not even gonna tell you i want you to look this up it is the dumbest thing is it is it is the reason why I don't consider myself a gamer. I'm just a yeah. dude who likes playing games. Like right. this, this stuff is stupid. Well, I mean, it's people taking people taking something that's supposed to be entertainment way too seriously. Really, like, and that, like I said, like I told Knox, like I've been telling Knox for the last two weeks, man. My new tagline is gaming. Fun has never been so serious. <laughs> and, and that's and that's that's the real deal, dude. Like people take this stuff like way too seriously, man. It is a form of what? It's not a form of work, right? It's not a form of stress release. It is a form of entertainment. That's why it lines up with movies and books and television, as far as entertainment is concerned. And, man, man, I don't know. I'd be John Brown if I let somebody come in and mess with my form of entertainment and just try to, you know, tamper my fun like you just you can't do it i'm not gonna let people do it i I just need because i'm promising you now if you don't tell me what it is i won't care enough to look don't even worry if you don't care enough to look don't even worry about it it's it's not even worth your time it it, it'll just it'll it'll make you angry honestly it 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 really will It, it it really will if, if, let, Scar, can I give him a 20 second summary? Because I know we got to get out of here. If you want to, if you want because, to, go okay? Because we, we still ain't talk. We still ain't talk about the uh, the 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 cartoon without without words. I was going to oh. say we surely didn't, and I oh, was going to go first on that. On that. Yeah, oh, but you still got your that. 20 seconds. You got All your right, 20 go. seconds. All right. Okay. So Gamergate, Gamergate is an accusation by a huge group of people who claim that. People in the industry are getting paid off in the gaming media. They're getting paid off to like games that they don't really like, and it's and it's it's pretty much the whole man and the whole system is against the pure consumer. That's the essential ground founded basis of the most of the dumbest movement I've ever seen in my life. So that being said, if you support Gamergate and or and you want to come have a discussion, oh, you can talk about it on so Proof Point. Oh, did he just fall out? Did he just fall out? Well, we'll, we'll get we'll get him back in here again. We'll get him back in here. But um, but yeah, man, it is it is honestly the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, yeah. oh, oh, there he is, right there. Uh, ignore that invitation. Ignore that invitation, Phoenix. Um, yeah. But but yeah, so it's really dumb. But uh, that sounds very stupid. And truth be told, and I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry if this offends anyone that's listening. I don't really give a damn. But my thing is this. If you listen to my show, I don't give two flying rats asses whether or not you like my opinion or anything of that nature. I speak from my experience on gaming because gaming is what it's supposed to be for me. 
fun. Mm -hmm. It's supposed yeah. to be my way of escaping into a different world and communicating with the people I call friends. Now, if you want to bring your argument to me on Twitter, please do, because you'll get blocked. I don't argue with grown-ass adults, or seemingly grown-ass adults, about entertainment. If you want to argue over, you know, politics, you know, something that's actually enlightening, then let's do so. But see, that's why I'm not really on Twitter like that anymore, because it's kind of like you're watching grown-ass men and women argue over just stupidity. Just yep. stupidity. I mean, you can ask Scar, man. I've, I've been I've been a huge proponent of Google Plus for like two years, and Scar's like, "Ain't nobody on there," and then he's like, "Now nah, he's on there." <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he just you know he made the shift. But no, I I used to I use Google Messenger more than I use than I use Google Plus. I, I just Google Google Plus is just more. We can't talk about this right now because we we're running out of time. Oh, okay, okay, yes, yes, okay. So twenty second of of the intro without words. I'll go first. Okay, and I know Scar Figure might agree with me. That's why I want to say this first. The original Fox animated series of um, the X Men on Saturday morning. There you go. There you that, go. Is, that is it, yo. Yeah. Since we're talking about Saturday mornings, which was the original email for it. Now, it will right, be a right. tie for me. If you're talking about cartoons, it's another Fox cartoon that will be a tie. That in Batman the Animated Series. I think those are the two. I would I, I, would, I would accept. I would accept that as an answer, but it it doesn't it doesn't come close to the X Men. X Men is everything. That just yeah. that song. It, it ain't got no words. No, nope. it has sound effects, but it's just that that was just everything. Like that was back when we actually went outside to play. <laughs> and like so you would go outside. You would go outside. You would hang with your boys, and then what was it? Eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock <laughs> hit everything shuts down for a half an hour everybody, everybody goes back home we go get our X-Men on and then we come back outside and go play but everything <laughs> shut down because the moment you no, 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 that, was, that was it that was everything that song yeah. that song you you feel that in your chest like I don't know what it is in your chest say it with your chest <laughs> You feel like in your chest, yo. That I mean, for real. I would say I would say that above. I mean that that is above Teenage Mutant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for me. Yeah. But uh, it's it's that that is just that is everything when it comes to Saturday morning cartoon songs. There is no, there is nothing greater than that song. Like the, the feeling that you get. I think I can hear it right now, and it takes me back there. You know, sitting Indian style in front of the floor model TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, eating all right. <laughs> I know that's how I used to sit. Like, eating, eating, eating some, eating cereal. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, know, you ain't even eat before X Men. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that X Men. X Men is everything. <laughs> X Men is, it is everything. It's, it is absolutely the X Men theme song is absolutely everything. Oh man, yeah, the X Men theme song, man. Ah, uh, it's off the charts, man. I can't argue with that, not one bit. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up, man. I I can't argue with that one bit. Oh my goodness, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome, man. So I I can't argue. Um, Knox, he 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 spent the time to write a quick email, and uh, he's this, he and he pretty much agrees with everybody here when we talk about the overhype of games. I know I'm switching subjects, man, but. I mean, we all agree. Like, it's all unison, right? It's all I got, unison. I got one. I got one more thing to say about the um about the X Men. Go ahead. Is, is there is there any worse feeling than sitting down to watch X Men and it was a free run? Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's hard to sing, man. <laughs> yeah, dog. Yeah, I've had that happen, and you're just like, oh, for real? You know, that's when TV God started to get real important in my household, dog. Yeah. All right, go ahead, go ahead, Knox. <laughs> All right, yeah. So Knox, Knox said he said basically the overhyping is us. Scar, that's what he says, man. The overhyping is us. Games media, um, you know, some uh, in the outlets, communities, and stuff like that. He said we saw people shooting dudes with mechs, and he's talking about Titanfall, really, you know. And not only that, but PAX. And, and everything that led up to that year's E3, all they saw on her were glowing impressions of the game, right? Because it won like game of the, you know, it won like game of show. Um, for like many shows leading up to that, and so he said that it, it mainly, mainly it was like you know all the media and stuff playing it up, but then it was us as well. And he said Watch Dogs and Destiny was the publishers and developers. Uh, like, and as I said, man, <laughs> you saw a ton of Watch Dogs stuff, man. You know, talk about Ubisoft, you know that that demo that they showed us wasn't even 
you know, yeah, the early see. the early demos of Watch Dogs was no nothing close to what we actually got. Not not no. At least no with way. at least with Destiny, they held all of that stuff close to the chest and took the Alpha and the Beta. Mm-hmm. Yep, and um, you know, and he's he's talk he talks about how uh, with Watch Dogs and De- Destiny, like they both shared um the final both final products they delivered on the idea, um, but it was but that idea wasn't presented necessarily, and it ended up with bland character development choice and di- and uh, and bland direction in major sections of both games, and so um, let's see, you know, he's talked about Bungie here. And it's talking about the, the 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 Bungie video documentaries, which are actually really well done. They sold um, they sold the shit out of those those games. They sold they sold the shit out of Destiny. But that's Man, good job, it yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But um, he said that uh, they spoke of a vast, nearly unlimited world, epic social experience and story, but receiving the f- final product was none of the case. He said, in his opinion, there's absolutely no character development. Don't even know who you are or why you're doing what you're doing, and um. And I'll fed into the hype of the games, but we as consumers and a product should be, well, uh, and a product should be as advertised. But in gaming, we rarely hold publishers or developers accountable. And uh, and and that was pretty much his thoughts on it. So I mean, as I said, I mean there are a lot of fingers to be pointed, but you know it's 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 a 360 degree problem. I mean, starting from everyone for the develop the publishers. I'm sorry, the developers, the publishers. It moves on to. Um, you know the the uh, the the gaming outlets, right? And then and then it's us, and then our communities that talk about it, and then really it's each individual gamer. So I mean, it's a fivefold problem, and it's not it's not something that can be easily addressed. But I think it's something that that um we can we can make a difference. But I tell you, what's about to make a difference is about to change, and Gotham is about to start. So fellas, starting with um both of y'all are, are East Coast fellas. So uh, I'm gonna start with you, Mark. Uh, go ahead and give you shout outs, man. Tell the folks where they can find you. Ooh, shout out to everyone that listens to the Phoenix Podcast. Shout out to everybody on this show. Shout out to all the listeners of the show. Um, you can find me at Twitter on King underscore Phoenix 410 or look us up in your favorite podcast directly under the Phoenix Podcast. There you go. Mike, aka Scarfinger, where can they find you, player? Uh Twitter, Scarfinger, uh G plus, uh uh, Scarf, uh, Scarfinger Hoodrich is on mm-hmm. his for G plus um, in Scarcasm Live the podcast. Not for sure, for sure. It's and uh, the site, it's the squad, son. No, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'm still mad I haven't been on the dream team, but you know I'm not inviting myself. I'm just saying. I thought I thought I, I thought been, I thought I haven't been on the open forum radio. So, I'm just saying. But, uh, what? No, we. I was invited. I was the wife and I were invited halfway through a show, and we finished out a show. But I've never been on a full open forum. I'm just saying. Oh, you know what? We're gonna fix that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna have a boy. I'm gonna have the fellas try to get you on tomorrow, if at all okay. possible. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we're gonna fix that. All right. So, um, my shout outs go to some of my new followers: Bill Bradley, Prax Jarvin, TFL Car. Which, if you if you're into cars and you like people who review cars and things like that, I've been watching them for a while, but they just follow me back. So, check them out on YouTube, and uh, they're also out there on Twitter. Uh, Munion, Munion Line, and um, Nandine Hanini. Uh, my, my followers as well, and also shout outs to uh, shout outs to Gaming Tag Radio for mentioning me and 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 um in their article on the National Podcast Day. They did not have to do it, but I thoroughly appreciate it. So thank you, and uh, thanks to all my listeners. Um, thanks to everybody uh, who stopped in and listened to Prove Your Point Fifty Six. Thanks for both of you fellas for sacrificing some time in the evening. Y'all go enjoy sure. Gotham. Everybody, thanks for listening to Prove Your Point Fifty Six. We'll be back in your ear next week. What if I'm Stay not open. watching Gotham? Well, then you can go do what you like to do, player. <laughs> I, mean, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I guess I'll go get my DM on some more. Uh, for sure, for sure, man. Well, uh, yeah, holler at me, man, because uh, well, I'll try my best to get you on tomorrow. I really will. So. All right, just, yeah, just let me know what time and stuff like that. Now, I'll, see, I'll see what I can do. Okay, thanks, man.